Hi, everyone. This is Phil Travis. And for this week's discussion forum, I wanted to make a little video to talk about a major theme when it comes to writing about history and historical change. And you probably have noticed this um, in, your, in your readings uh, in this class. And I like using these videos rather than every time just like writing a post in the discussion forum. It's nice sometimes to put a, uh, put a video in there, um, kind of adds to the, the multi-sensory element of the class, I think, and you can see, you can see your professor. And so I, I like to do these, these videos, and so I hope everybody um, enjoys them. I'll try not to make this too long. So what I want to talk about is the idea of contingency as a historical concept. Today, historians very much seek to often emphasize the contingency of historical change, meaning that historical change is contingent on a number of factors. It is contingent on the decisions and ideas of actors at particular times. Um, it can also be contingent on animals. There's a very interesting book called Creatures of Empire, in which the author argues that pigs in the early Columbian exchange in colonial America, particularly colonial, um, the English colonial colonies, that pigs were an, an actor that fundamentally um, had agency in transforming the land and factoring into the transformation of life for Native Americans that were, that were experiencing the collision between the old world and the new world. But, so historians today, very much, many of them often write from the standpoint of contingency, i.e., that is, it could be different had these decisions not been made in this way, had these actors not um, uh, made the choices that they made when they made them, the narrative could be different. And uh, historical contingency is a very powerful concept for historians because Contingency means that if events could very well be different, given the actions of, of actors, contingency means that the actors are very much empowered and that the driving force of historical change comes from the decisions and actions of individuals. And that can be a very, very powerful lesson when it comes to creating a better world in the future, using history as a guide and thinking critically about our age today and using history to deploy the creation of a better world. Um, the concept of con contingency allows you to do that. Rather than a deterministic understanding of history, contingency suggests that actors that are engaged in decision-making and make the right decisions at the right time can change the course of history. And so it's very empowering it's, you know, along with the idea that, you know, social constructs are reconstructed constantly, along with the contingency of events, these are things that give you hope that the actors of history, that people can create a better world. All historians have not always, you know, written from the ground of the idea of contingency. Many historians today like I said, right from the basis of the contingency of historical change, it being contingent on the decisions of, of actors, their ideas and their actions. But many historians in the past, and this is not like a criticism or, or per se, it's just a different way of writing, it's a different way of coming at history. There have been many historians in the past that, particularly in the 60s and 70s, that wrote more from the standpoint of 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 broadly based deterministic ideas. Uh, Marxist historians, for example, were writing from the groundwork of a Marxist framework of history, which is deterministic. Uh, Marxism believed that these long process of political and economic change was predetermined and that humanity would move from Monarchy. Monarchy would abuse its power, it would repress people's individual liberty, and this would give rise to capitalism. And capitalism would ultimately, you know, prosper for a period of time, and eventually it would create 
uh, a great deal of inequality and exploitation for the workers, and eventually workers would rise up and they would overthrow the factory owners and they would create a socialist workers uh, democracy. And then eventually, over time, that socialist workers state would give rise to uh, a communism. And according to Marx, this was all predetermined. These were necessary, inevitable events in the process of economic and political change in history. It was a deterministic process. Ferdinand Braudel, the great French historian who wrote um, huge works like the Mediterranean, Braudel, and he was this is he's a legend of history. I mean, he's one of the great um, historians of the 60s and 70s, along with individuals like E.P. Thompson, um, Walter Lefebvre, and others. But Ferdinand Braudel, he wrote from the standpoint of the long durée, as it was called. And the long durée was the idea of the, the ultimate determining force of, of the environment, of nature and disease and famine and, and these types of things on humanity. And so you also had um, Emmanuel Wallerstein in World Systems Theory, which was a sort of neo-Marxist viewpoint of, you know, I, I hope that's the right phrase there, Wallerstein's, Wallerstein's World Systems Theory is really looking at the capitalist world system. And it's also sort of writing, even when they're writing about particular events, those particular events are cast on top of the framework of a larger deterministic structure, the global world system. And so at the base of some of those great historians of the 60s and 70s, and again, this is not criticizing that idea, it's just saying that those scholars, E.P. Thompson or Burdell or Wallerstein, they were writing from the base of an understanding of history that was to a large degree deterministic. They were writing about history and the particular events, but ultimately the idea that grounding it all was a sort of uh, something determining human action uh, or, or human reality, shall we say. Um, and so many historians, great historians, his, used to write from the standpoint, they would write about particular events, but those particular events were cast in the backdrop of a, of a theoretic perspective that was deterministic. Marxism with the deterministic economic and political framework, um, the deterministic forces of the long durée uh, for Ferdinand Braudel, the, uh, the, the determinism driven by uh, Emmanuel Wallerstein's world systems theories um, that uh, determine the interworkings of a capitalist world system that would eventually inevitably give way in a sort of Marxist sort of sense to another uh, system. Many historians today, and this is not to say that those other historians are, are necessarily wrong, um, only that contingency as the root and the basis for much historical writing has become much more, uh, much more prevalent and popular today to cast history, history as, um, as, as based on contingent factors, that historical events could be very different, but certain contingent factors uh, made by historical actors over time has changed the course of history. And this does not mean that historians are not still uh, to some degree determined by the environment, um, by climactic changes or environmental changes or disease or famine. Um, it doesn't mean that. It, uh, uh, it just means that today historians are often less grounding their narratives in a deterministic framework and are instead much more in, emphasizing the contingency of historical change and that historical change might be different and the actions and the decisions of individuals and movements um, of people are ultimately very significant in changing the course of history. And that approach to history, again, can be very empowering because it suggests that historical actors can change the world, that you can reconstruct the world and create a more perfect world in the future because we are all agents of history and we're all actors and we can all sort of change the human experience moving forward. All right, everyone, 
uh, well, it got kind of long. That's like 10 minutes. I was going to say it was going to be just a few minutes, and it's not just a few minutes. But uh, hopefully that's pretty, um, that's pretty informative, and hopefully I'm not misrepresenting my understanding of Ferdinand Braudel or any of these other scholars. But uh, if you ever go into graduate school, you'll almost certainly be asked to read the works of E.P. Thompson, was a Marxist scholar of the New Left in the 60s who wrote a great work um, um, on the making of the English working class. You'll probably be asked to read Ferdinand Braudel, the great French historian who emphasized the longue durée in his understandings of, of history in works like the Mediterranean. Um, you'll probably be asked to even read Wallerstein. These are very important. These are very important. Uh, landmark uh, stepping stones in understanding his historiography on the, on the broader level. So hopefully that's pretty clear. I'm sure you can hear my little dog Mossy is squeaking his toy away. He loves that toy. Um, let's have a great, uh, like great discussion for him this week, and, and hopefully this is helpful um, to any of you who might take your historical um, re research to the next level in either, a, in either a major undergraduate writing project or a graduate writing project. Uh, so let's have a great week. I'll see you in the discussion forum.